All right. It actually looks like we have almost, oh, we have almost everybody together. Fantastic. Thanks again. So we're going to go ahead and kick it off. It is two o'clock. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Melanie Beweiler, NATDA Senior Membership Manager. With us is Jeff Jones, the National Trailer Sales Manager with SSI. SSI has partnered with NATDA to offer discounted services on DAR reports as one of our many member benefits. If you're interested in this member benefit and many others, feel free to visit our website to join. If you have any questions about this webinar uh, or the information we're providing throughout, feel free to submit your questions by clicking that chat button below and typing it in and we will answer all those questions we'll try to get to them at the end of this webinar. In today's webinar, we will be analyzing 2019's trailer registration data from each area of the country. We're super excited to have Jeff back uh, to learn more on the state of the trailer industry. Jeff, welcome. Thanks for having me, Melody. I'm looking forward to it. So with that, we'll get started. Um, and I say we're going to get started. We just had our first um, goof here. There we go. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. So as Melanie said, I'm Jeff Jones with Statistical Surveys. Um, Statistical Surveys is lo located in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Fortunately enough, I'm, uh, I can live in Crawford, Texas and don't have to bear that uh, cold weather. But uh, today we're gonna recap the 2019 trailer restorations uh, for the light to medium duty trailer industry. So we're talking about 26,000 pounds and under. So Statistical Surveys was founded in 1958. We're the premier provider of market share solutions, trailers, RVs, towables, and motorized in the RV industry, marine, manufactured housing, and power sports. We actually started uh, with manufactured housing in 58, and then it bloomed into the RV industry, the marine industry, trailer, and just recently power sports. So we track retail sales within the trailer industry, and we're considered the scorecard when it comes to industry leaders, et cetera. Um, so trailers are broken out into five segment groups. They're broken out into both enclosed, horse, livestock, and open. So today we're going to look at the whole entire market for each, for all segments, and then we're going to break them out individually because I know that everyone on here, probably some handles both, some don't, some horse, et cetera. So you can actually see what that portion of the, uh, the industry is doing. So you have a, a clue as to how we process our data, et cetera. I wanted to kind of run you through that a little bit because some of this is really important to understand. So new trailer is purchased at a dealership. The dealer registers the trailer with the state DMV. Now, in some states, maybe the dealer gives the paperwork to the customer, the customer takes it and registers it, but somebody registers a trailer, and when that trailer is registered, we capture it. <clears throat> so we purchase the data from all 50 states. SSI takes the bins and decodes them by manufacturer length and axle. So each VIN number has a world identifier in it. That world identifier is unique to a manufacturer. So we're able to see who the manufacturer is. And within the VIN number, a manufacturer is required to put the number of axles and the length of the trailer. Now there's several digits left over in the VIN that the manufacturer can use at their discretion. And with that, they file a letter with NHTSA telling what they've done with it. It may be identifying whether they're open or enclosed, aluminum or steel, the hitch type, any number of things. And we get that letter from NHTSA, so we're able to break it down even further. We decode the data and put it in a format that our customers can understand so they can make informed business decisions. And I get asked this question many times, our data only includes new trailers. 
It does not include trailers that are already in the marketplace. So here is something that everybody really needs to understand because it's very important. We capture two types of data. We capture placement versus dealer data. Placement data really should be called manufacturer's data because it is about the manufacturer. It's not about the dealer. So this is based on where a trailer is registered, has nothing, placement data is, has nothing to do with who sold the trailer, where it might have been sold. It's where it's registered and gonna be used. That's how you gather market share. All 50 states report trailer registration. Every time a trailer is registered, we get that VIN number. It's used by the industry to term market share. Because again, the trailer may be sold in Little Rock, Arkansas and used in Dallas, Texas. And that's where it was registered. That's where the market share is. It gives a complete picture of the trailer industry down to the segment type. Again, five segment types. Size of the market by state, BTA, county, city, and zip code. So a BTA is a basic trade area that's set up by Rand McNally. Rand McNally says that people living in this BTA are more apt to buy there than to go outside. Not to say they won't, but they're just more apt to buy there. A BTA is made up by a certain number of counties depending on where it's located. Up in the Northeast where you have a lot of rivers, sometimes there's only one county in a BTA. I'll give you an example, Dallas-Fort Worth area, I believe there's 27 counties in that BTA. So it just varies um, in where you're located. Um, and out west, because of mountain ranges, sometimes the BTAs get very small. So the dealer information. It's based on the dealer and where the dealer is located. Here's the problem. It's only available in 23 states. So there's only a certain number of states that report dealer information. I'm gonna come back to that in just a minute. It should be used exclusively when looking what a dealer is selling. Great way to compare dealers. We wish all 50 states reported the dealer information, but they don't. But the key is placement or manufacturer's information. Because if you are a dealer in Indianapolis, Indiana, which Indianapolis, Indiana happens to be a reporting state, but if you're in Indianapolis and you look and you're selling open trailers and you notice that the brand that you're carrying is up where the market total market is down indicates you're probably doing a pretty good job if you're down and the market's up it indicates you're not keeping up with the market and every dealer is smart enough to know who their dealers are around them and what brands they handle so you can look at the data and look and see manufacturer a and you know that dealer X sells it. So you have a pretty good idea of what's going on and what that dealer's doing. Again, all states report placement manufacturer information, dealers only 23 states. Good. And just, to remind, just to remind everybody, placement data is actually for manufacturers, right? Yes, it is. It is about manufacturers, okay? and what a manufacturer is selling in a certain region or a certain zip code. It goes all the way down to a zip code. Okay, wow. So here are the 23 reporting states. I'm gonna show you a map, a little bit easier to see. In the dark blue, those are the reporting states. So example, <clears throat> A dealer in Texas sells a trailer in Oklahoma. And Oklahoma is a non-reporting state. So you would never know who the dealer was. But 
the dealer in Texas sold brand X in Oklahoma City. And you look at the placement information and brand X would show up in Oklahoma City all the way down to the zip code. So that's what a dealer needs to be focused on is what is going on, what product is selling in a particular area or in their area. So we're going to talk about the industry and what's going on, and I like to start off with each segment and kind of recap what's happened in the last five years, because it's kind of interesting when you look at the total market and then you look at each segment group. So you can see all segment groups, those five segment groups, in 2015 were just over 900,000 units. And in 2019, they were just a little bit over a million, almost a million, 100,000. You can see in 17, 18, and 19, they're pretty consistent, not a lot of big swing in the market, but that's what the total trailer industry looks like for a five-year history. Now what we're going to do is compare it to 19 and 18 and drill it down just a little bit so we have a better idea of what's going on in the last two years. And in these slides, I'm gonna give you the top 10 states because doing all of them and doing all the BTAs, we, we would be here the rest of the day and everybody would be pretty bored. <laughs> so you can, you can see that in 2019, the trailer industry on the top line where it says all was up just a little bit over 2018, about 4,000 units, 0.35%. And then you can look at the top 10 states, Texas being number one. But if you look over here, Texas was actually down 2.14%. Yeah, I see. The Michigan seems to be 146% up. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's great if you're living in Michigan, but it's not all it's not all good news. Let me explain that and tell you what's going on with Michigan. Okay. Because there is a there is something really strange going on there. And uh, what's happened is is over the over the last few years we've been talking with the state because we really come to recognize that they're not reporting correctly, not reporting all their sales, there's something going on. And so in March of 2018, I'm sorry, in 19, um, Michigan changed how they were reporting either to us or how they were getting the dealers to register the trailers. So what you see is a huge increase um, in the state. And I can tell you that when March of 2020 comes around, you're going to see that kind of neutralized because it all started in March of 19, and we're comparing year over year, so that's why that number is so high. Okay. Um, it's not really that high. Makes um, sense. And I think what you'll find is when the data releases for March of 2020, you're going to see more realistic numbers like you're seeing here where it's down 5% or up 3%. So there's the, the top 10 states. And if you look across there, the arrows are just showing you if they're up or down. So now we're going to look at the segment types. So I told you there was five segments, open and closed, horse, um, livestock, and boat. And you can see that the industry's up 0.35% opens up almost a half a point, and closed is down. Boat is up 3%. The only industry that's, that's up pretty nicely. But then you have horse and livestock, and you can see they're down. And you look at the numbers across here. So in, in horse, they were 14,091 in 19, and 15, 907, and 18. And you can look at livestock there. Here's a map of the country. So 
If you look at the very top where Michigan is, you can see it's up 148%. And that is the only state that's covered in a very dark green. That means they're up quite a bit. Then you can see the other states here that are kind of in a lighter green, and those states are up. And then the pinker states um, are the ones that are down. So I want to talk about BTAs. If you remember when we started, I told you a BTA was a basic trade area. And it's set up by Rand McNally. And we saw that Texas was number one, and they the first two BTAs are in Texas. I can tell you as you go through the data, you're going to see states that are up are down and then you start looking at different BTAs and they're either up or down. They're not necessarily following what the state is doing. And then when you drill it down even further, the counties, the cities, and the zip codes, you can see this. This is why it's so important for a dealer to understand what is taking place in their market. Because it just because the market is down, or up in Texas does not mean that's necessarily what's happening in the dealer's market area. So you can look at the top 10 BTAs, and I can go back to the chart here, but I don't believe Arizona showed up in the top BTA. Florida, um, or top state, Florida was number two, but the first um, BTA they have is the 10th one. So they only have one BTA in the top 10, although they were second in state ranking. Talk about leaf groups. And here, I'm only going to talk about leaf groups in the all segments. And the reason why is if you look at the chart, 9 to 16 foot is the most popular leaf group. In when you look at all segments. Well, then when you start breaking them down by individual segments, nine to 16 is number one in all of them, except for both. And in both, it's 21 to 30. So instead of looking at these numbers time over time, we're gonna look at them one, here, one time here and I'll, I'll just be quiet for a minute and let everybody look through it. Okay, well, let's move on and go to the enclosed trader market. So if you look at enclosed over the last five years, you can see where we were in 15, just uh, over 185,000, where in 19, we were almost 220,000. But you can tell that um, 19 is a little bit below 18. So just like the all segments, the last three years have been pretty consistent with each other. So then we look at the top 10 states. And Texas is number one. But you can see it's down 3.73%. But there's that Michigan again, where enclosed, it's up 85%. But again, that's all going to stabilize when you see the data release from 2000 for March of 2020. But let's, let's think about this for a minute. We'll look at Texas, Florida, and Michigan when we get to the BTAs. So we look at the map again. Map looks a little bit different than it did before, but Michigan is still highlighted in that dark green. So now we're back in those BTAs. And here is Dallas Fort Worth, number one, but New York is number two. And New York was not listed in the states. That's where I go back. Every dealer needs to be really focused on their market. 
Not necessarily, yes, the total market is good, but their market is what's important. And you can see that uh, UART, it's down 4%. There is Detroit, uh, that's up 60%. That's that Michigan number again. But if you just look through there, and you look at look at Houston, um, they're what number five, and they're down almost eight percent. So if you're in Houston, BTA, and you're up ten percent, you're doing good. But if you're down ten percent, you're not performing with the market. So we'll talk about open. And opens one that's pretty consistent, stair step all the way up. 15, we were just um, over about 550,000. This year, uh, 19, we were about 620 or 630,000 units. And it was up just a little bit over 18. Once again, the top 10 states. Texas seems to be doing fairly well. It keep holding their own. Um, but again, they're down 2% where the market was up almost a half a point. Michigan and open trailers was up 158 or 153%, where I believe in closed it was about 60%. Here's the map. A lot more green with open trailers. Michigan is still in that dark green, but if you look right over here, North Carolina is also a little bit darker green than the other states, not quite as green as Michigan. BTAs, Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, Dallas-Fort Worth is up. Houston is down quite a bit. Minnesota, I'm sorry, uh, I wanted to go. See, there's Detroit is number 10, and they're up 112% in that BTA. Let me touch on market share here just a little bit. I should have done that earlier, but you can see here, let me, let me find a good one that's um, good to touch on. Well, there's not really one here that I see on this page, <clears throat> but market share, you could be down in sales growth, but market share be up because the industry's down. Here, it's not really down an open trailer, so it's not a good one. But your market share could be down or up, depending on what sales growth for the whole industry has done. Then we talk about the horse trader market, and you can see the stair step has somewhat been in the wrong direction in the last five years. We're just a little bit over about 17,015. And this year, we're just um, about 12,500, 13,000 units. So it's, it, it's, our smart market has had a rough time in the last five years. Again, we talk about the top 10 state. Texas is still there, off 3%. But here, here's a good one. So the growth in Texas is down 3%, but the market share is up 9.29%. And it's all because Texas is outperforming the industry here in growth or in what's not growing really. Because every market, every state is down. There's a few where they have an increased market share. So here is the horse market. You can see there's a lot more pinkish color on here. 
even Michigan is not lit up in the dark green. We have the one state here that is, and then we have some states that are real red up here in the very top eastern uh, part of the country. We have two different states that are indicated in red. That means they have a, a big loss in what they've done the year before. Top BTA, Dallas Fort Worth. Um, again, it's down two and a half percent almost, but its market share is up 10%. And it's because it's got less loss in growth in number of units than the industry does. Milestone, kind of done the same thing as uh, the horse market, except in 17, it was its best year at about 14,500 units. Um, and then this year, it's just a little over 12,500. So here are your top 10 states. So here's the, the livestock market in the map. You can see Michigan is lit up in a lighter green, but the state of uh, Nevada is in the dark green. You see some red states. <clears throat> Here are the top 10 BTAs for the livestock market. And if we went back, and let's just touch back here for a minute. You can see Texas was number one in total units. And then if you look here, you can see in the BTAs, you have uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, San Antonio. Then you skip down to Austin, Lubbock, and then Amarillo. So in the livestock market, Texas is number one as a state. There's a lot of BTAs that uh, appear here. And you can see that the growth in the Dallas-Fort Worth market is 4.5%. Um, these other ones are down a little bit. Austin, I'm sorry, Austin's down. And then you get down here to Amarillo, and it's up about 8.5%. So the, the livestock in the horse market has really struggled in 18 and 19. Here's the boat trader market. Pretty consistent uh, stair step in where they are. You can see here. In 15, about 150,000, and then in 18, they were, uh, I'm sorry, 19, they were about a little bit over 180,000. Here are the top states, Florida being number one, Texas, and then Michigan. Look at the number of Michigan, 287%. So most of the number and total units in Michigan were boat traders. If you look here, they went from 12,000, well, they went from 3,000 to 12,000 in 19. That's where a lot of that market came in uh, to, to make that number 185 in the overall segment. Here's the map. Once again, Michigan's dark green. There's a lot of other green states in here. There's some, um, then we look at the BTA. But remember where Michigan was 
and look at New York, just right on down the list. The first one that shows up is Detroit, and they're up 183%. That recaps the market, but I don't have a slide on this, but I did something just so that we could talk about it and understand it. Because Michigan is throwing the numbers off a little bit. We can only report what is given to us. And again, we suspected things weren't quite right in Michigan and for some time in that we believe it's corrected itself in March of 19. So as we go forward, once again, I think you're going to see numbers um, kind of stabilize. But I took and ran a report and totally took out all the numbers for Michigan, just left Michigan out of the picture. The market with Michigan in it was up 0.35%. I'm talking about all segments, 0.35%. When you left Michigan out of the picture, the market is down 2.39%. And when you look at them individually, open trailers is down 1.87%, and closed is down 3.46%. Boat trailers are down 1.73%. Horse and livestock didn't change a lot because, as we saw, Michigan didn't appear much in there. The horse was 11.34%. Um, was livestock was 8.21%. Uh, so kind of recap in 2019, the market leaving Michigan out was down to, because we didn't put any numbers in there, I won't say it was down 2%. Mm -hmm. It was probably more closer to flat than anything. Um, but I left it out so you could kind of get a feel for it. This is why I'm going to tell you it's so important to really understand your market area and know what's going on there, what your competition is doing, by brand, and although the dealer information not, might not be available in your state, even if it was, I'm going to tell you, you look at the placement manufacturer side of the information mm -hmm. and just use dealer as a thumb, as a, a rule of thumb. And that really winds it up. I don't know if anybody has any questions, but I'm certainly happy to answer it. Great. Yeah, we've, um, we're have we going to send some um, personal responses to those who've asked questions in the chat box. Um, I know uh, a couple of things. One, with the overall decrease in trailer sales, I imagine service centers are becoming increasingly important from a revenue perspective. With that in mind, we just want to remind our dealers that we have added a new hands-on technical training component for technicians at this year's NATDA trailer show. So far, we've added classes on hydraulics, axles, and hitch ventilation. If you're interested in learning on how to reserve one of those limited seats, please give us a call. Um, with any other, any other questions, this particular, people are asking, how will we get hold of this information? This particular webinar will go back on YouTube, so we will be posting this on our YouTube page. If you want to subscribe, just go to natda.org to subscribe to our YouTube page. You'll be able to have access to this webinar, to SSI was webinar from last year, if you'd like to see uh, that, the trends from last year and that particular, uh, the slides from that. Um, and as a reminder, SSI has partnered with NATD to offer discounts on services such as the DAR reports um, as one of our member benefits. If you're interested in the benefits, this benefit, other benefits, feel free to reach out to our website. You can reach out to me in my email, melanieb at natda.org. Um, and we really appreciate you joining us today, Jeff, uh, to share these reports with us. And thank you 
to all of our members who are joining you that we do webinars like this. If you have any topics that you want to hear more about, please give us feedback. We want to be able to present on topics that you are interested in, including these particular topics from Jeff. So thank you. Thank you again, Jeff. We really appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me. No problem. We hope you have a great, warm rest of your day for the rest of the country. Thanks again. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Bye.